folks and welcome back. So in this session we're going to use everything we've learned about reading uncertainties to um, apply uncertainties to doing an actual calculation with different measurements in it. Um, and then we're going to do our final, our second uh, type of uncertainty which is random uncertainty. And at that point you will have a complete understanding of how to apply uncertainties at higher level. See, didn't take that long. Um, so the classic um, calculation that you would combine uncertainties with very different measurements is a speed calculation. So that's what we're going to do just now. So calculations with uncertainty. This is something that comes up, up very often in exams and assessments, um, but is essential to you as a scientist, one of the most important scientific skills that we can um, teach you at this level. So let's say we want to do um, a measurement of speed of sound, okay, a real, a real classic, okay, the last time you will have done it, which should have been early National 5. So you need a distance measurement, a time measurement, and you'll calculate the speed. Now, I will say to you, I've totally retro-engineered these numbers to give us the speed of sound. Um, so, uh, so just go with me here. So we've got a distance measurement. And we measured um, a distance of 20 centimetres, just quite a small distance. We set our two microphones 20 centimetres apart. But because we uh, measured that distance with a metre stick or ruler, um, then it's 0.2 zero zero plus or minus zero point zero 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 five meters twenty individual whole millimeters there we go <laughs> sorry had a little blank there okay meters tens individual centimeters millimeters halves there we go um, and that's in meters. We need our measurement to be stated in meters because it's going. It has to be an SI unit, so it can go ahead and give us a speed in meters per second. We then got a time, and we measured our time of zero point five nine plus or minus. It's a digital measurement, so one of the smallest possible readings, milliseconds. Okay, and we would like to find our speed. So that's how I would expect any physics student to lay out their uh, information. And now we're going to do the calculation. Now, when you first do the calculation, guys, you just ignore the, that the uncertainties are there at all. You just get the number and deal with the uncertainties after. So D equals VT. That's 0 0.2 is equal to 0 0.5. Mm, what am I up to? V times 0 0.59 times 10 to the minus 3, because that is a millisecond. V equals 0 0.2 over 0 0.59 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, I know I should be writing 2, 0, 0, 0, but we all know it makes no difference to the answer. So it's fine. 0 0.59 x to the minus 3. And there is our speed. Um, so indeed, it comes out as 339 meters per second there we go pretty close to our standard higher speed of 340 meters per second so now that we've got our our answer we want to find out just how uncertain we are that that is the true answer what is the range of possible numbers our data could have given us okay so now we're going to deal with the uncertainties so because these are measurements in completely different units, to compare them, we have to have unitless uncertainties. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn those uncertainties, those absolute uncertainties, into percentage uncertainties. So 0 0.0005 over 0 0.2 times 100. And that gives me 0.25%. And 
And then for time, I have 0 0.01 over 0 0.59 times 100. Ah, and now I have 2%. Remember, a single sig fig for your uncertainties. Okay, so my actual number here is 1.69491, blah, blah, blah. But I can only have a single digit for my uncertainty. If my first digit is a number, I can only have a single digit, so 2%. Okay, now there is an odd quirk. There always is, isn't there? Um, if your first digit, your first significant figure is a 1, you can state your second one. So I could have written... 1.7% here. But I think, uh, but that is more a rule that we tend to apply in advanced hire. So I would always stick in hire to a single sig fig for, for your uncertainty and just have no exceptions to that rule whatsoever. So now we have two percentage uncertainties and I think it's very obvious which one is going to be uh, the more controlling uncertainty here. We've got um, one at 0.25 and one at 2%. So one is eight times the size of the other. Um, so we need, um, we're gonna take that 2% forward to be our um, overall uncertainty. So we can state our final speed as V equals 339 meters per second, plus or minus 2%. Now, you'll always be asked, really, to give your final uncertainty as an absolute uncertainty. So we now need to find out what 2% is of 339. So 2 divided by 100 times 339 equals... six point seven eight. But this is an uncertainty, so I write down a single digit. I round that 6 up to 7. Okay, V equals 339 plus or minus 7 meters per second. And there is our final value. Now, thinking about the measurements, the raw data that we originally took and thinking about the fact that their reading uncertainties are fixed by the measuring device, not by the measurement, what is the easiest way I could use to reduce my overall uncertainty in this final value? Pause me if I haven't given you enough for thinking time. But the easiest thing I can do and your kind of first port of call for evaluations, um, the easiest way to reduce your percentage reading uncertainty is to carry out larger readings, okay? So instead of making a measurement of 20 centimetres, why don't I make the measurement over two metres, okay? Um, and then I will significantly decrease my percentage uncertainty. So guys, to give you a chance to practice this process one more time, let's see just how much that does reduce our uncertainty. So, increase the size of the measurement Reduce the percentage reading uncertainty. Now, of course, it doesn't reduce the absolute uncertainty in the reading uncertainty. Your absolute uncertainty for a uh, meter stick is still half a millimeter. Your, half, your absolute uncertainty for that timer is still 0 0.01 seconds. But if you're reading a much bigger measurement, then the percentage that those numbers are of your measurement is much smaller. So let's do this distance of two meters. So 
So two meters, so that's my tens of centimeters, individual centimeters, individual millimeters. And you know what? We're using two meter sticks to do that. So let's say, uh, let's increase our reading uncertainty. I mean, I don't think uh, we can be quite so accurate there. Um, two meter sticks together. Let's say we can no longer read to an uncertainty of half a millimeter. Let's say we can read to an uncertainty of five millimeters. So plus or minus 0 0.0 tens, uh, 0 centimeters, but five millimeters. So I've actually increased my reading uncertainty there because I'm putting two meter sticks together. I no longer think I can read to an accuracy of half a millimeter. I think sticking those meter sticks together is gonna mean that the range to which I can be truthful about is rate increased to about five millimeters either way. Okay, well, let's see if that actually still allows me to have a smaller percentage uncertainty. So now I'm reading over this uh, bigger distance. Um, my um, time now increases to 5.88 milliseconds. So that's 5.88 plus or minus 0 0.01 milliseconds. And I want to find speed. So folks, I'd like you to pause this video now and go ahead and try out that calculation all the way down to getting an absolute uncertainty for your speed. Over to you. So here I am just working through my calculation. I found my speed and uh, now I'm gonna find my percentage uncertainties, which are always what you're interested in, in higher. So in the first one, it was the time that really gave us the big um, uncertainty. Let's see what we're getting now. Ah, 0.2%. So um, you'll see here, guys, that my time percentage uncertainty has gone way, way down. And um, it's actually a 20th of, no, that's not wrong. That's not right. A tenth of um, of what it was before. Um, proportionally, my reading uncertainty for my distance has stayed the same, um, even though I'm I've had to increase the absolute reading uncertainty. Proportionally, it's just the same, and now it's my largest reading uncertainty, um, but it's still an eighth of the reading uncertainty I had before, um, in terms of my speed. So now my speed is three hundred forty meters per second plus or minus 0.25 percent okay let's so let's see what that is 0 0.25 divided by 100 times 340 equals oh i'm breaking my own rule here hold on can't believe i didn't catch that before 0 0.3 percent it's not my rule the rule okay 0.3 percent there we go we all make mistakes 0.3 divided by 100 times 340 equals one so i now have a final speed of 340 plus or minus one meters per second so that is a far far better result. So in the future guys, whenever you're evaluating an experiment, think about it. Is the easiest thing you could have done just to take larger, physically larger measurements? Okay, in our next video, we'll cover random uncertainties. See you then. Thanks folks.